Welcome back and uh, good morning once again. Uh, thanks for staying with us here on The Breakfast. Uh, we're now moving into our first major topic of today. The Nigerian president, Muhammadu Buhari, um, in a statements released yesterday, um, admits that Nigeria is in a state of emergency. And of course, uh, these you know, statements were made where, when he was encouraging the new service chiefs and uh, asking the, that they give their best. And he will also do uh, what he can to support them in every way to ensure that we completely read the country of insecurity. We're going to be having a conversation this morning with two people. But before we get into that, um, we have a report by Vivian Oguche to quickly play for you. And we'll be back after this. YCE, security scholar, Lord appointment. Ex-defense chief, minister, ask Nigerians not to expect much. Ngodo. Others fault Buhari as Ohaneze keeps mum. Stockbrokers applaud, expect an end to terrorism banditry. Wike, Pandev, others say action belated. PDP, Fayoshi, seek probe of former security chiefs. All these are screaming headlines describing a range of reactions to one of the biggest talking points this week. On the 26th of January 2021, a special advisor to the president on media and publicity, Femi Adeshino, announced that, quote, President Muhammadu Buhari has accepted the immediate resignation of the service chiefs and their retirement from service, end of quote. Prior to this, Nigeria's military had come under severe criticism over its supposed feelings. The call for the sack of top military leaders reached its peak as it resonated in the National Assembly at frequent intervals. Finally, Major General Loki Rabo, Chief of Defense Staff, Major General Ai Atahiru, Chief of Army Staff, Rear Admiral Izzy Gambo, Chief of Naval Staff, and Air Vice Marshal Ayo Amao, Chief of Air Staff, have been picked to replace the retired military top brass, General Abayomi Oloni Shaki, Lieutenant General Tukur Buratai, Vice Admiral Ibokete Ibas, and Air Marshal Sadiq Abakar, respectively. While the nation's main opposition party, the PDP, says the appointment of the new service chiefs is rather late in the day, the ruling APC says it welcomes the development and calls for public support. Generally, the reactions have been mixed. That's a good decision. We have been expecting this sack for a very long time. To me, it's a very, very good thing. It is very good if they give chance for a new, a fresh idea. Public affairs analysts are also having a field day as they throw in their two cents. To some persons, it's a welcome development, and to some others, it's related. I will want to align with the letter views because um, the crime and the violence in the country was even gotten out of proportion. Former President Olusha Gwambasojo, who said that even the removal of the service chiefs is not likely to improve on the quality of our security uh, situations. And he is a professional. I am a bloody civilian, mm -hmm. candidly. So the, the only thing I can say about the change that has come, I can only hope that the new service chiefs will be faithful to their professional duties. Despite diverse opinions, a closer look shows that Nigerians do not yearn for just a technical defeat of insurgents, but a total eradication of banditry, kidnappings, terrorism, and other forms of crime. Vivian Uguche for Plus TV, Africa. Thanks to Viviano Gucci for that report. Uh, we'll now be saying good morning to uh, former assistant director at the DSS, Mr. Dennis Amakri. Thank you for joining us. Good morning to you, sir. Good morning. Thanks for having me. Great to have you. Let, let's quickly start with um, statements like we are in a state of emergency. Um, what does that mean you know, to you? And what does it mean to be in a state of emergency with regards to security? Uh, when the president uh, says that uh, we're in a state of emergency, um, I think he's trying to re-emphasize the importance of the period that we are right now and the reason for 
uh, appointing these new service chiefs. Uh, indirectly, it's telling them it's not going to be business as usual. And uh, when you're in a state of emergency, that means uh, there's no holds back in trying to solve a particular position, uh, situation. So um, I hope they pick that up as a direction from the president uh, to um, change the situation that we found ourselves. Okay, and, and um, you know, what, he also mentioned um, the level of support that uh, the presidency would be willing to give to the new service chiefs um, and, um, uh, you know, how important it is that they do what is necessary to rid the country of the levels of insecurity we are currently dealing with. So I, I want your thoughts on where, you know, there might be, have, you know, we, we may have lacked support from the presidency um, in the past and what you think or what you think is likely going to change, uh, you know, at this time. I don't think they've lacked support from the presidency before. Um, if you remember, there are several meetings that the service chiefs had had with the president. If there was a time he was telling them uh, enough is enough. Um, and then um, another meeting he was telling them that uh, um, he's not going to take a move for an answer again. Uh, you know, so he has always tried to support them. The National Assembly itself had always come out to say, okay, um, after meetings with the service chiefs, that they are going to give them everything they require. Now, if all that has been done and we never had um, a positive results, that means there is a problem. And that problem is what these people should solve right now. Because it's not going to be business as usual. And um, I hope strongly that there must be some kind of uh, performance uh, indicators, uh, key performance indicators to, to, to measure them by. It is not just go and finish Boko Haram, but uh, you are going to do it in trenches. That means every three months we are going to review what you have done, or every six months we review what you have done. Uh, so it's not going to be business as usual, but it's going to be accountable where you, all the service chiefs will be accountable to um, why they are being appointed. Yeah. And then if any of them is failing or falls short of these uh, performances, then I think the president should come out as a war general himself to go ahead and replace them because uh, it's not just a, an issue of... Uh, appointment, a political appointment to become a general, but uh, it is something, uh, a situation where Sir. you are going to solve a problem. So, so good thing that you've mentioned uh, key performance um, indexes now, and of course what the expectations will be with the new service chiefs. But from your analysis, if you remember for many, many, you know, for a long time, many months, maybe more than a year even, Nigerians continue to clamor for um, the replacement of the former service chiefs. What do you think the presidency saw in the KPIs that were given to those former service chiefs that made them stay that long without answering the call by, you know, from Nigerians to take them, uh, to replace them? Do you think that they met with the key performance index that the presidency had given them? I can honestly tell you that I don't know why he kept them until now, because he's going to change them anyway. So why didn't he do that earlier? You know, I really don't know why he kept them till now, because I think they had diminishing return. Uh, they were not producing again. We are prosecuting, okay, out of the 10 years that we've uh, been fighting uh, uh, Boko Haram, they've been there for five years, you know, half of it. So if they are not able to do it, I don't know why he was keeping them. Uh, so, um, maybe the problem is with uh, the government itself, because we have uh, seen where the government has deployed soldiers to almost all the 36 states of the country, and then the police itself has been spread so thin, the military has been spread so thin, so they are not well focused to handle their uh, responsibilities. The army is not able to uh, beat Boko Haram because they are not well focused to do that. 
because they don't have enough manpower. The manpower is in the internal security. And then the police itself is uh, doing internal security, but they don't have the manpower. They've also called in for the army to come and help them. So these might be the issues. And uh, he's not blaming the service chain, but uh, it might be a self-blame where the government has to do something serious. All right. So the president has declared that there's a state of emergency on security in the country. Now, help us unbundle this term as someone who's in security yourself. What does it entail and what's the president empowered to do in a state of emergency? If a state of emergency is declared, especially like, for instance, we want to declare a state of emergency in Lagos, it means that all the democratic processes are going to step aside for military, martial, martial law. That means the military will take over and then they will be in charge of executing the processes of the state. So in this kind of situation where uh, a state of emergency is being declared on security or it is declared on uh, education, for instance, uh, that means there must be more serious martial activities. Martial activities means you don't have to go to the legislator, uh, legislature to have uh, approvals or stuff like that. You know, it's with immediate effect. And by saying that we are in a state of emergency on security, it means that um, everything has to be done um, with immediate effect. Now, without any kind of lagging. Okay, if, if we can all agree that a state of emergency means that all democratic processes can be suspended and that the military can exert, you know, control, do we then expect in the next few days to see troops, you know, bombarding the Sambisa forest and every other insurgent hideout and, you know, beginning to enforce operations to root out these terrorists in the next few days and as soon as possible? That is what I would expect. That is what I would expect because um, by now, if a state of emergency has been declared on it, uh, so that means the soldiers are going to carry the war to the to the insurgents. It is not waiting for them to attack you and then uh, you count your losses. Then tomorrow you go and attack them, and the next day they come and push you. No, we are not, that that uh, that ballet that uh, ballet is over. I think right now they should carry the war down to these guys and then panic them, you know, make them very uneasy. I think that's what I expected. And how do you really do that? That means they have to withdraw all their soldiers from internal security. They should have the numbers because you just don't do it with the present number you have. You have to withdraw those people to go in there and deal with these things once and for all. Then somebody will ask again, if they withdraw the army, now what is the police going to do because they are, you know, very, very short uh, secuted? Another answer would be for the, for the police to recruit. I don't know why we don't want to recruit enough people. We recruit Egypt, which is less than our population, but a very large population in Africa have one million policemen. One million policemen. In Nigeria, the military, the army, navy, air force, SSS, police, NACDC, all of them put together is not up to one million. So what are we talking about here? We know the problem and we should go ahead and solve it. Dennis Makri, you, of course, are a former assistant director with the DSS. Uh, you know tons and tons, you know, about intelligence gathering. Um, the Nigerian army and, of course, the service chiefs, I'm sure you would also agree that um, you know, we can't win this war against terrorism, you know, simply by, you know, uh, hitting them hard with all the ammunition that we have. There has to be uh, the other aspects that need to be, you know, put in place. Do you th think that we have done well enough with intelligence gathering and been able to, um, you know, do, you know, what or play the part, you know, that intelligence plays uh, in the fight against terrorism? Uh, we've not done very well. We've not done ultimately. 
um, especially uh, the, among the service chiefs, we are having a, a lot of, um, how do I call it, they are, they are working in silos. You know, there was a time that um, uh, the, the army chief and the chief of defense staff were not seeing eye to eye. Uh, now, right now, we have got a new team. So the, the new team is starting on a, a, a clean slate. And what I would expect, what I would expect is that they should work as a team. They should forget all other kind of primordial sentiment and then see themselves as patriots who are here to solve a problem. And if in solving that problem, all of them should synergize or work together, you know, um, uh, get the DSS to work with them, uh, the military, the army, and uh, the air force. Like, for instance, if they are going in for an, a bombardment, you know, there must be ground forces uh, communicating directly to the air, uh, the air forces. And then, you know, that kind of synergy is what makes a successful hit, you know. So the air to ground integration must be perfect. And if they are doing that, also they have intelligence in the mix because uh, the, the, the intelligence people are going to be with the military people, uh, the army people on ground it's as they're moving. And then as they're moving, they should be able to talk to each other. That is the whole success. It's not a magical thing. It is not a new invention. Uh, this is something that has been carried out among military people all over the world. And I think they should go ahead and do it. All right. You just mentioned the need for synergy among, you know, these different arms, you know, of the military, among the service chiefs. But there's no synergy among the executive and legislative arms of government. I mean, Buhari uh, sacked, you know, or, you know, the other service chiefs, or they resigned. We, we don't know the facts now. But there are new service chiefs. He has given them, you know, the go-ahead to execute whatever is needed, you know, to safeguard Nigerians. But we see the National Assembly saying that their appointment was not, with, you know, with their confirmation, and that, that these service chiefs would not get salaries. What, how would this now affect you know, the performance of their duties? And why you know, are we hearing different things from you know, both sides of government? I think uh, the uh, legislature is trying to cause another, uh, throw another spanner in the wheels. Um, have we been uh, confirming service chiefs? Service chiefs are usually not confirmed. Only politicians are confirmed. Politicians. Like, for instance, the Minister of Defense, who is a military man, his appointment will be confirmed because, besides the fact that he's a military man and he's working, going to work in defense, he is going to be confirmed because that appointment is political. You don't confirm the uh, uh, the Inspector General of Police, for instance, the Chief of Army Staff, the Chief of Air Staff, the Director General of SSS, these are not for legislative confirmation. So whoever is trying to push that idea is just trying to be mischievous as far as I'm concerned. But how do you think this would affect their morale, you know, the morale of these people who have a mandate now, you know, to begin to execute security operations? Well, you know, one thing they are going to do is boost the morale of their men. It is not them sitting down and thinking of their own morale now. Because I think one of the problems that we've had with the Nigerian military fighting this particular war is morale. You know, they've had morale problems. And how do you solve that? Uh, the soldiers that are in front need to, number one, be given very good equipment to fight with, modern equipment and modern processes and systems. Number two, their benefits and welfare are taken care of, including their families that they left in town to come and fight. Remember, this is a volunteer army that we are running right now. It's not a conscription, conscription army. So when you do things like this for the fighting forces, they will be sinking into war. You know, so this is what 
need to be done. And I, I'm sure the, the, the service chiefs are very much aware of this. All right, but, um, just a quick clarification. I, I had to do a little reading, and it says a uh, federal high court in Abuja uh, had on the 1st of July 2013 ruled that any appointment of service chiefs by the president without approval of the National Assembly is unconstitutional and illegal. Um, I don't know if anything has changed between 2013 and now, but you know that's um, what I was able to find. Please run that regards. by me. Run that by me again. And are you reading from the Constitution as amended, or is a newspaper uh, story? Or well, as amended? When are you reading this? The 1999 Constitution as amended. Yeah. Where is this stated? Um, Where it's is a, this judgment? It's a, it's from an article. It's an article online. But of course, we would need to confirm that, you know. But I don't, I don't know if there's it been any amendments in, of the 99, con nah, 99 not, constitution since it then. It is not in the constitution. I would, would clarify on that one. All right. Then uh, we are not going to put that. Okay, yes. fantastic. But you know, still, you know, and I think this is one of the challenges that uh, many people would have with regards uh, the um, order by the president to the service chief to do what is necessary to, um, um, of course, read the country of uh, insecurity. Uh, there's expected to be, you know, more energy and fresh ideas, you know, with these new persons that have uh, taken charge of these positions. Um, and I, I would like you to quickly share on what you want from the presidency at a time like this with regards to uh, the, you know, support. What level of support would you want the presidency to give these persons um, um, at a time like this? Okay, thank you very much uh, for that. Um uh, first of all, let me also uh, try to reinforce the previous topic we were saying about confirmation. You know, the, the, the uh, chairman of the EFCC is to be confirmed because he's on a political appointment. You know, he's not the head of, uh, like, the police. He, remember, he's a policeman, but he's working as uh, on a subsidiary uh, uh, issue. So anyway, that's by the side. Now, what will the president do? What will the president do for these people? He has said it all. He said he will give them everything that he wants. It's a, it's a state of emergency and um, he's not going to hold, by, hold anything uh, from them. So they are going to sit down and replan, re-strategize. You know, he has given them the direction. And then the next one they have to do is to sit down and plan the strategy. And after they finish planning the strategy, then they have to run this by their field commanders who are going to come up with the field tactics on how to prosecute the war. So um, they say they're giving them money. Sometimes we hear that they're giving them money and the money has not really come to the, uh, to the defense uh, ministry. You know, um, sometimes it takes a lot of time. So if we are going to run this by a state of emergency, I think they should go ahead and give them all the funds they need and not just giving them funds because of course that will encourage corruption. If they have to buy planes, like we're expecting Tokano planes to come in, let the Tokanos be received properly those who are trained on it already, who are in the United States, should come out and start practicing and going ahead with it. If we have to get armaments, let them go and buy it for them. There are welfare issues. Make sure you, make, uh, you take care of the welfare of the soldiers and their families. If we are going to strengthen the police when the military is going to do this, then we should not forget recruit more policemen. These are things that government will do. It is not just throwing money at things. Because throwing money at things, we can see, it has bred a lot of corruption. Yeah, I mean, Sam Akri, we, not yes. also before we go, we, I hope that we have time for this, but we currently have, um, it seems like a hydra-headed security challenge. Um, in 2014, or, you know, since 2009, the big one was Boko Haram. There were bomb blasts, you know, there were killings of hundreds and thousands of people. Um, in the last few years, we've, we seem to have, you know, expanded or, you know, gotten even more deeper problems. Now we have banditry, we have kidnapping, we have the headsmen and, and um, all of that going on at the same time. 
The approach, I believe, has to be different from these service chiefs. The Tucano jets may not necessarily be um, valuable or be useful, you know, with tackling kidnapping or banditry, I'm not sure. Um, so I want you to quickly, you know, share your thoughts on that one and, and why, you know, you believe that the new service chiefs might be the answer or maybe not believe so. Now the new service chiefs have to quickly, quickly review this particular war. That's why I said that they should strategize. Are we doing the right thing? Is it an asymmetric war? Are we, are we busy throwing arms and ammunition into the field? How, what are we going to do by looking into the ideology of these people that are fighting? That is by with Boko Haram. Right now in, this, in the country itself, you find our banditry, kidnapping going on all over the states of the Federation. That also, I can tell you, is an extension of Boko Haram. Many people don't believe it, but my observation and from certain indications, this is Boko Haram coming in, into the country looking for money to feed themselves, looking for money to sponsor their operative operations. So, what are we doing about it? Strengthen the police. And then, of course, deal with it. Because I don't see a just few ragtag soldiers running our military, which is one of the best in Africa, for 10 years without having a handle on them. All right. And um, lastly, before I think this is going to be our last question, the Minister of Information uh, a few days ago uh, was quoted as saying that uh, we are in a much better place than we were in 2015. Uh, with regard to security and of course now the president is saying that we're in a state of emergency uh, it seems like there are conflicting uh, narratives with regards to what we are dealing with um, how you know what is your response to that we are in a state of emergency i go with the president for the minister of information i think you guys should send him a visa to come back from the foreign country that he is in because apparently it doesn't sound like you understand what's going on in this country. It's in a foreign country. So, first of all, remember, he's the guy that says that Boko Haram has been technically defeated. You know, he does not have an assessment of the situation. Now he's saying that we're in a better situation while the, the president is declaring uh, a state of emergency. So, he does not have a very good assessment of the situation. And he should not be talking without talking to the professionals. So I think uh, uh, I don't believe in what he's saying at all. Mm. Indeed, I, I think we would definitely, you know, need a government that speaks, uh, you know, with one voice. Thank you very much, Mr. Dennis Amakri, for speaking with us on the breakfast this morning. Thank you for having me. All right. Um, you know, I would always say the conversation on security is, is, is a never-ending one because of the numerous angles that need to come into play. Uh, to ensure that we um, live in a more secure country. Um, the idea of Tucano jets and big, you know, helicopters and F-1 fighter jets or whichever ones, you know, that we can purchase may, you know, play, you know, their own part. But there's many other angles that need to, you know, be put in place. Mm. The police itself, with regards to internal security, has its own role that it needs to play. Yes. If we're dealing with kidnapping, if we're dealing with... Um, um, banditry and the, and the like. So you don't necessarily need the army to take charge of some of all those things. That's why there's the NSCDC, that's why there's the DSS, that's why there's the police. And so if you change the service chiefs and you do not improve on the funding for internal security and the funding for intelligence gathering and the funding for the police themselves, then... You're basically you know, leaving, we, leaving them handicapped, really. Absolutely. And, and once again, like I asked yesterday, if we had the same energy from the presidency while the former service chiefs were there, you know, and of course they continue to defend their actions with regards to their support for the you know, service chiefs and what they were doing to you know, rid the country of insecurity. Um, if we have new service chiefs, what is going to be different, what different you know, from the presidency? Yes, yes. What you know, new energy are we expecting from the presidency? And why didn't it start three years ago? Why didn't it start four years ago? Why is it starting now? What is, what is you know, the huge thing about 2021 and new service chiefs that makes me believe as a citizen that the presidency will do better with you know, the type of support and the type of ideas that is going to be given um, in, um, to fight insecurity in Nigeria? And the other angle is, I can't wait to actually see how this matter between the presidency and the National Assembly unfolds. Because the way this country is, 
is I, I wouldn't be shocked to see by the end of uh, February service chiefs coming out to say that they've not been paid salaries or well, after months they've not been paid salaries for the past six months. National Assembly is against their appointment. I mean, anything can happen. Really. I shared that with Dennis Amakri because there is a newspaper publication um, a few years ago that quoted former Senate President Bukola Saraki as making a mistake when he said that service chiefs do not need confirmation. Mm. And so it went back to um, the uh, court ruling in 2013 that said that the service chiefs, though appointed by the president, need to be confirmed by the Senate before they are um, 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 allowed to go to work. You know, without that confirmation, mm. they are null and void. But we'll you know, go to the 1999 constitution, of course, so we don't deceive uh, our viewers this morning. Yes, and, uh, and definitely bring you updates on how this matter unfolds. No, right. but nobody wants your salary to be to be held up, <laughs> definitely. <laughs> anyway, that's it here on Security Matters. We'll now be talking COVID updates and a possible second lockdown after this break.